I do have slides as well. All right, guys. So um, it's what you guys have probably been looking forward to. It's kind of like the um, reward at the end of the module. So um, the basically we're going to talk about lock picking, and um, so that you guys will understand how like common locks work, how much security they actually provide, how you would go about bypassing a lock if that's what you're going to do, and so that you understand like just like understand the physical side of security as well so uh, that's what we're doing today and in the labs you'll actually be putting all of this into practice so you know I'll try and explain and visualize this for you guys but um, you know it's all going to make a lot more sense when you actually get to get your own hands on this stuff um, and until then this is basically we'll just percolate in your mind until you actually get to the hands-on stuff and then hopefully this all makes sense and it will kind of click um, so, you know, the question is how much security do door locks actually provide you? Um, how, how, much, how secure do you think a lock is on, on your door? Depends on the lock. Not very. Depends on the lock. Depends on the, yeah, yeah, it depends on quite a few factors. It depends on the door. When you're sleeping at night, are you worried someone's going to walk into your house? I'm not worried. I'm cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. optimistic. <laughs> as long as it's quick and painful um, I don't mind as long as you give me a painful death um, <laughs> today is a good day to die um, yeah okay if you've got a server that's very, you know processing um, financial records um, then how secure is it in a locked room for example. You would assume it's secure, barely secure with a locked room. You would assume that. Well, maybe. And I, I mean, basically, the question is maybe. And you've all said different things like, well, it depends on this, it depends on that. Depends. Do you have security guards? Is it like a locked room in the middle of like a forest that's no, not manned or anything and someone can just walk up and smash the door in? You know, like the, yeah. It provides some level of security. I think we can accept we can accept that there is some level of security, and it may or may not be enough depending on what our security goals are. Um, so the question is, why is this relevant to this module? Why am I? Why are we covering that now? What do you guys think? Yeah. There's a physical side of security for all technology-based security. So, if we have, um, you know, we set up perfectly like software-based secure system with, um, you know, we've, we we're using like encryption in all the right places and access control in the right places and everything. And someone breaks into the building, well, then there's still like. A lot more risk than you know. Often, when you're designing security, you're assuming that they don't have physical access to the machine. Uh, and there's some security things you can use. You know, you can use some forms of encryption to, for example, if they did manage to get a cop, like turn the machine off and take it away, maybe they can't access the data. But a lot of times, things aren't encrypted, and you know, a database from a website, for example, if you can get to that server, you basically have access to everything. Um, and even if there is encryption, if you manage to get to a machine and it's currently running and you have physical access to it, then also again you might be able to access all the stuff in RAM and all that sort of stuff. You know, you can you can get access if you've got physical access, then a lot of the software security stuff just doesn't work very well because it's not what it's designed to stop prevent. Um, and again, this module has been had like an offensive security kind of spin to it, so we're looking at security from um, an attacker's perspective. So we're looking at a system saying, well, how would someone go about breaking that so that we can better understand how secure something is and how someone trying to break in does that. So that's, where, that's why this fits into this module. So there's a lot of security features and mechanisms that are used on a day-to-day -day basis even though there's widespread knowledge of how weak they are and you know of ways of getting bypassing them so common pin tumbler locks are ubiquitous so they're everywhere 
you know, you, you look around probably, um, hands up, if you don't have one of these kinds of locks on your front door. If, right? So the rest of you, the rest of you have the, this kind of lock on your door and um, it, there, are, there are known ways of bypassing those locks and it's been known for a really long time uh, and that's the art of um, lock picking. And um, you know, if we go back far enough it used to be like a deep dark secret and you know people would have to be members of like these societies or whatever to be brought into the fold to learn about how you go about picking locks. Um, nowadays it's all public information, we just google it and all of that information is there. Uh, it's no longer like a trade secret. Um, there's in mo most countries you can freely like learn about this stuff, you can buy yourself lockpick set off Amazon for like you know they're not that expensive you can get some that are like, yeah, super cheap. It's not expensive. You can get yourself the stuff that you need to pick locks really easily. Um, it, in most cases, it's not illegal to own own it as long as you you know it's about intent. Um, and um, although in Western Australia, where I'm from, you're not, I wouldn't be allowed to actually have this um, unless I was a registered lock locksmith. Um, but in this country. You, you know, buy it off Amazon. Um, and so, so yeah, the information's there. Um, there might be um, easier ways for a criminal to break in, right? Um, you know, w you can always smash in a window, break down a door. The lock is literally just the, a piece of metal that's coming across, in most cases, just holds the door to the door frame. The door frame is usually a piece of wood that's about that thick. Um, so, you know, you can often get past a door without a key, without having to, you know, basically, I guess it, it all comes back to the thing we were talking about last year about, you know, if security is basically as strong as its weakest link. So even if we had a really awesome secure lock, someone can just come down, come along and smash down the door, then, you know, they can get in that way. But there are instances where that might not be, you know, the preferred way of getting in. When would we want to pick a lock? Yeah, just trying to be a bit sneaky. You don't want it to be known that you, you that you were even there. I guess you could, if you manage to pick a lock and you go into a building and leave again, they might not ever know that you were that you were there. Yeah. Whereas if they come along the next day and the door's smashed in. They've got a pretty good idea that something's happened. You can think of any other reasons why you might. Still. Yeah, yeah. It makes a lot of noise smashing the door down. And if you're trying to do it while there's people around, you draw attention to yourself. Yeah, the noise could be drawing attention to you. Um, yeah, absolutely. It's also, if it's your own door. You yeah. Smash your I was wondering if anyone was going to think of that. Your own door, you might like actually lock yourself out of, of your house or. or of a building, and then you know you might want to get back in. Um, uh, <laughs> yeah, um, you might have a locksmith that you call that actually has the kit, and they'll unlock it for you, uh, rather than carrying it everywhere. But or maybe you've got it in your back shed or something. You know, whatever. Um, maybe, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Walk around with a lockpick set rather than an, an axe. Um, the um, Kevin Mitnick. Do you guys know who he is? Um, so he was. He was a subject of a movie, but you know, he basically he was on the FBI's what most wanted list for a long time, and he was mostly did social engineering based attacks and. Um, he was finally caught and held without a trial for a long time and there was a long, when I was in high school I remember there was a lot of stuff on the, in the internet about like free Mitnick and stuff and like give him a trial and all this sort of stuff. But anyway, he is out now and he runs a security company um, and his, his business card um, actually is a lockpick set that you can pull off like it's a metal card and you can sort of pry off the little lockpick set. So yeah, it's really, it's not, it's not that hard 
to um, make yourself look. And, and you know, Jul the lecturer, you know, Julian Old, when when we first taught this um, last year, I was like telling him about lock picking and everything, and he went home and actually made himself a lock pick set, like machined it up himself at home. So you know, you can make these things. Um, yeah, windscreen wiper blades. That's a pretty good start. Yeah, I mean, you can. Yeah, you can. Yeah, <laughs> windscreen wiper blades. You can. You you can use um, just. You know, in movies they use hairpins and stuff like that, but um, you you can use paper clips. I've seen it done. They're a bit flimsy, so it's it's not the easiest way of doing it. But you can use you can do it with paper clip. So this is the gear that we've got right here in front of you now, um, and you can see this is what you'll be using um, when you actually get the hands-on stuff yourself. So you can see here we basically got. Um, these practice board and it's like of in increasing difficulty so this one's only got one pin in it this has got two pins three pins four pins and five pins so this is like the 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 most realistic one but it's good to practice to like learn how to do it with like single pins and sort of build up the the difficulty level rather than just sort of trying to jump straight into that which can be very very difficult um, but when, once you get the hang of it it becomes easier um, and um, We've also got um, this cutaway lock, so I'll hold it up to the camera and then I'll hold it up to you guys. I've got no idea whether that's like showing or focusing or whatever. But um, basically it's it's a lock where it's the side has been cut away, so you can look into it and see the pins in there and see them moving. So it's quite good to learn about how it's working and um, <clears throat> you know you can pick the lock while looking at it so that you get an idea of like how it's all working and everything. Um, as another step of building up to actually doing it without being able to see inside. Uh, and then we've actually got the lock pick set, which um, has like all this stuff in it. All right, so um, we've got a, a few different lifter picks, like hook picks. So that's where, what you use to actually move the pins. We've got a tension wrench or a torque wrench, and that's what you use to apply pressure so that, you, so that it'll work basically. And if you you know watch movies or TV and stuff, they almost always leave this bit out. Um, but yeah, movies are doing it wrong. You can't pick a lock without a tension wrench, because uh, otherwise, as soon as you if you're just using a single thing and pushing around in there, the pins are just going to be dropping back down. You know, and you're not going to be you're not going to get anywhere. You, just, you need a tension wrench so that it will actually work. Um, so there you go. Now you can um, laugh at inaccuracies in uh, lock picking in movies. Welcome to my world. Um, if it wasn't enough that you guys ha can laugh about all the security stuff, so like if you maybe you enjoyed the show twenty four when you know when you saw it, sorry, yeah, one hundred twenty eight bit encryption. Hang on, dig 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 dig. Uh, got it. Uh, well done. You use some words that vaguely make sense. Um, so the the. What these, what this is called, if you look on the slide there, you can see it better than me pointing at this thing. Basically, the shell is this part around here that doesn't actually move when we turn the key. We've got the keyway, which is actually you know where the key goes, hence the name. We've got the ward, which is you know how it's kind of like a jagged, awkward shape there and that just kind of like gets in the way if we're trying to do stuff in in there. But it generally is because the key's shaped the same way. That's the key ward. Uh, the plug is the bit that actually turns, right? So when we turn the key, there's the central um, thing, cylinder, and that's turning. That's the plug. Um, if we actually look inside here, which again, just as well, I put these slides up because you know didn't manage to get this thing projecting properly. Um, you can see in there um, that you know what's going on. So you basically got. Uh, a spring here which is kind of pushing the pins down there's two pins and there's kind of funny shaped pins here but you can see it most clearly here so there's a pin there and a smaller pin underneath um, so this is the the driver pin that's the top pin that's pushing down and this is the key pin the little one underneath um, and that um, you know these are going to be of various lengths and if we put the correct key in like I've got here it makes the um, makes these two pins, the driver pin and the key pin, line up on the shear line along this line here. So if we've got the right pin, key,
key in, the, the cylinder can turn, right? Whereas if we put the wrong key in, then it won't turn because these ki these pins actually aren't all lining up along that line. So the key, because the key pins are the wrong length, the driver pins are like getting in the way of us like turning or the key pin of us actually turning the key. So um, so that's like basically how 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 it works. So you can see there are um, you know this is another image here where you can see the key pins if they're all they're basically um, the length of the key pin depends on the part of the key. So if we've got those in a lock and you insert this key, then the lock's going to open, right? Because it's, the, it's the correct um, key to make those all line up in a row like that. And you can see here, it's all basically it's exactly the same concept within um, within this um, padlock. So you know the, this concept applies to a vast array. Probably the majority of locks work in this way. Um, so if you put the wrong key in, like I just demonstrated, these aren't lining up. So th that line there is no longer lining up on the shear line. That line there is no longer lining up on the shear line, and that line there. So you know the key's not going to be able to to turn because the plug's blocked basically by the pins. So in order to actually pick a lock, um, you basically um, insert the, the tension wrench um, and then get a feel for where the pins are uh, so you can choose a, um, a pick that you think is going to work best for the lock and that's part of like the process of getting some experience with it and you start off by just pulling it back and feeling for those listening for those clicks so you can get a feel for you know where the pins are um, so Basically, picking a lock uh, is going to follow these steps. So you start by inserting your torque wrench, your tension wrench, in here. Um, you apply a very small amount of pressure to this, um, and it's kind of like hold, holding down a key on a keyboard, that kind of pressure, like not much, just very lightly li resting your finger on it. Um, so you find the actual um, pick that's going to work best for you for, for the lock. And you know you can see in here there's a whole bunch of different um, sizes, so you might you know have a have a go at it. Some of the some of them won't even fit in the lock at all. Um, you know the the Euro style like cylinder um, locks, which we've also got some of that you know some of you will be using, uh, have like a thinner um, keyway. So you actually need to like find the the smallest kind of um, pick that you can get so that you can get in there um, more comfortably. So um, basically, you start by inserting the, the lifter pick. Usually, you, you start from the back, so you just small amount of pressure, gently feeling for each of the pins. You push them up slightly. Um, a lot of them will just bounce straight back down, and if that happens, it's fine. You just move on to the next one. Um, s some of them will actually be stuck. So usually, one will actually be the binding pin so once you find that one that's the one that you want to push up until you get a little tiny click which means that it's um, in the right place um, if you push too far you'll actually be over pick the lock and you won't get anywhere so after a while if things just aren't going well you just want to let that tension off they'll all drop back down into place and you can start again and that's basically it you just keep going until you've got all of the picks in all of the uh, once you picked each of those um, pins so that they're in place, it'll turn. Um, so I might try and demonstrate that now. Um, so we'll see how this goes. Uh, God, this, yeah, all right. Should we try the magnifier again? Uh, oh yeah, check out that high resolution image. Okay, it's not ideal, but it'll do. Yeah, I don't know. Whatever. We'll just pretend we're in the '90s, where that was like an awesome resolution. Um, all right. So, if we look here, let's see how we go. All right. Whoa! Check out that. 
Yeah, could you close that blind? That'd be great. <laughs> All right. So you can hardly see it, um, but no, I don't think it. I don't think it will be. Right. Oh yeah. Of course. So once you actually look back at this online, you'll be able to be able to see this in the high resolution because it's recording the video. Um, so, all right, actually let's start with um, the practice board. So, if we look at this practice board, we can see um, basically we've got a number of uh, locks, and as I was saying before, there's a different number of pins in each. So if we look back at this, um, we can see that this one here just has one of these pins instead of like all of these pins inside it. So it's been replaced so that it's just got the one in there to practice. So if we've only got the one pin, we can open it you know, quite easily, right? Uh, as I was saying before, you just start by inserting uh, the tension wrench, very small amount of pressure. So, you know, kind of just, I'm just resting my finger on it, not, or, you know, even less than that. And then once you find the right pin and you push it up, um, it'll click into place, those two pins will be in the right, aligned the right way, and it will turn. Uh, that's, you know, really easy with one pin. Like, I'll do it again, just because it's so easy. Um, like, you know, literally, I can just go, boop, and, and open it up like that. Um, things get more difficult when there's multiple keys, because now, um, multiple pins, sorry, because now we actually need to do them in the correct order so that we get the binding key into place and then we get the next pin into place and then it will open. Um, so again, I'll just demonstrate that quickly. Apologize for the low resolution on the projector there. Oh, yeah, of course I'm doing the wrong one. Um, so again, like what I was saying the first time, if you just rake it very slowly, you can get a feel for where they are. So they're right at the front there. I can hear two little clicks. So I'll just put a small amount of pressure, push one up, and then the other up, and we can basically try and figure out which one is the one that's binding. It's kind of awkward to do here. And then, um, so we just get those two in the right, or basically just get one in place and the next one in place. Because there's only two, you can, if you, you know, basically you could, you could basically pick that without knowing what you're doing. Um, once you get to three, it starts getting a lot more difficult. Um, and, um, you know, working your way all, all up, all the way up to, to five pins um, can be quite, quite a challenge. Um, so let's have a look at this cutaway one so we can actually see what's happening inside. Okay, so try and put it on an angle so that we can see the pins. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. So um, basically, this will make more sense if you watch back to this video. So I'll try not to take very long with this. It can take quite a while. Um, I think this took me like an hour the first time I attempted trying to do this, but it doesn't take me quite as long now, thankfully, otherwise I wouldn't be attempting to do it in front of you. Um, but just to give you a feel for kind of like what it's like. So I basically start from the back and work my way along, just trying to get each of those into position. And, um, and there we have it. So basically, um, 
obviously in real life you can't watch the pins moving um, but then I wouldn't attempt to do it in front of you to be honest because it will take me too long uh, if I'm not looking at it um, but obviously practice makes perfect with a lot of these things you can build up your skill with it so that you can actually do it um, you know more quickly so that's all there is to picking a lock so you've now seen and understood how um, it works So there's another thing you can try which is raking and if we look at this lock pick set again we can see there's a few, um, there's, you know, there's all sorts of interesting shaped picks that are used for different purposes but um, you know, this is an example of a, um, a rake pick which you can see that's, I'm holding this one here um, and you can use it to try and pick the lock by basically, I'm just, I'm not, not very good at raking to be honest. Um, but basically you it's just what it sounds like you just rake al along the picks and sometimes when you do that and you just quickly move backwards and forwards over the um, over the pins you get a number of them just like pop into place and that can save you time when you actually then you can just like start picking and some of them will already be in place um, so I think one of the trickiest things to be honest with locking uh, pick, um, pick um, picking locks is knowing when you've overpicked, um, because if you've if they, you've actually accidentally pushed the pins too far, then um, you know you can't have to you have to start again because there's no other way that you're going to get make any progress. So just if you've been at it for a while and you're not making progress, then the easiest thing is just to um, kind of start again, just and which you do just by lifting the um, the pressure off. Um, so that's basically, that's, that's raking. Um, there are some other techniques um, which when you're not actually getting your hands on experience with but I thought I should mention um, just so that you're, you know, you're aware of it. Uh, you can use key based impressioning which is where you can make a copy from a source key. So for example here you can um, you know, basically um, you know, press it, press it into some clay or some, you know, whatever material you're using to try and get an impression of the key and then you can fill that or use it um, to, to cut a key um, and you can generate a key that way. You can also use manipulation based impressioning where you basically insert a, key, a blank key into a key, um, into a lock and you move it around and then you can analyze where the um, actual, you know, impressions are and actually file it down until you've got a working key um, you can you can do that uh, there's key bumping we basically have a special uh, shaped key such as this which is designed to um, break into a particular type of lock so type of brand, brand of lock and then you can basically you bump it into place and that can kind of bounce the pins and then if you're lucky you can basically or if you pra well practice in it you can bump it and turn the key and um, you know it might take a few attempts, but you, you get those pins to separate, turn the key, and the, the lock will open. Um, snap gun uh, is quite an efficient way of of picking a lock, um, and it works on basically on the same principles of as um, the bump keys. Basically, what what you do is you have your tension wrench, you apply some amount kind of um, tension, you snap the gun and it will bounce the, um, basically it, it works on the same principle as um, you know those uh, pneumatic, whatever they're called, the um, executive swing things. That, no, you know like a swing that people have on an executive desk and it's got the balls that click against oh, each other? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And all the middle balls are staying still but the ones on the edge are moving. So it's transferring the kinetic energy through the key pin to bounce the driver pin. So the key pin stays in place, the driver pin bounces up and then you can turn, turn the lock. It is slightly destructive on the, on the actual lock so you wouldn't want to keep doing it over and over and over again um, which is one of the reasons that we don't, we're not going to use it on these locks because you know, we've got a limited supply. But, um, but you know, that's um, also something worth being, worth, um, worth being aware of because uh, it's basically the, the easy option. 
Um, and if you guys are interested in this stuff, there's what's known as lock sport, where you can basically compete to pick locks and things. And there are a um, number of like hobby, um, you know, organizations and things like tool, yeah, that actually meet to um, like practice the art of lock picking. And um, if you're interested, then you should um, look into that a bit more. So why do we care about this stuff? Well, if we understand that we can avoid the kinds of mistakes like this, so uh, killer escaped prison after being issued a picture of master keys to all the locks. So they gave this booklet out to all um, all the inmates on arrival to this prison, and it had a photo of the master key like on the front of the booklet. And uh, yeah, so he managed to actually escape prison based on on that. So. <laughs> Uh, if they actually un understood how keys worked, then you might not want to put a photo of your master key, give it to all the prisoners. Um, so yeah, so just a reminder, in the labs you're actually going to be doing this, so you're going to get a go at this stuff. So we have um, like a number of um, each of these. We've got some of these in the other like cylinder style, uh, Euro style lock, uh, and the cutaways as well. And you'll basically group up um, in groups of two and you'll get one of these to work together on and then you can swap around uh, in the session and um, hopefully everyone get a chance to um, to get a go at, at sort of things that they're interested in. Um, good, it's a good to sort of start your way off with the practice board and sort of work up the difficulty levels and um, you know don't be too surprised if you don't manage to get the five pin lock um, sort of sussed but you'll be you'll have a good like start getting quite a good understanding of it and a lot of people make it to like four pins and then kind of get stuck on the fifth one um, but that's where the cutaway gets comes in handy where you can actually look and see what you're doing um, so yeah are there any questions about any of that all right